morning and welcome to First Unitarian Church of Cincinnati. My name is Cynthia Heinrich and I'm honored to be your service leader this morning. Our urban community welcomes all with love, supports learning and spiritual growth, and serves our wider community. We acknowledge that these are the ancestral lands of the Adena, Hopewell, Miami, and Shawnee people as we continually work for justice, equity, and inclusion for everyone. We are glad you are here with us this morning, whether in person or virtually. During the service, you may hear mention of programs or other items of interest that raise questions for you. <clears throat> if you would like to learn more about these events or ask questions about our community and our faith, please contact us at member Dash care at firstuu.com. In just a second, we will share some on site accessibility information. For those of you who are joining us virtually today, we invite you to take this moment to do whatever you need to do to be fully present with us this hour. Now, for those of you who are joining us in person, please note there are listening devices in the back of the sanctuary along with noise-canceling headphones and printed orders of service. Should you like something to occupy your hands during the service, we invite you to pull out your needlework or sketch pad. There are also focus items in our VIP lounge at the front of the sanctuary. If you find you need to leave the sanctuary at any point, know that you can still listen to the service from our lobby, just outside the sanctuary doors. That is also where you will find our gendered restrooms. Gender neutral restrooms can be found on the second floor. And we have a special announcement today from the church board. First Church will hold its next congregational meeting at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday, September 11th, 2022. The meeting will be held in the sanctuary and online by Zoom. Please register in Breeze via the link that is being sent to members by email along with the meeting agenda. If you have questions, please send an email to board at firstuu.com. We begin our service this morning by lighting our chalice, the chosen symbol of our faith, with these words by Stephen Schick making sacred. Here we have gathered the elements of our lives, aware and unaware. We have carried them to this place. The joy of waking and living, the pleasure found in meaningful work, the blush of health, the pain of illness, the grief of loss, and the gift of love. Some of these we have carried a long way, some have bent our backs until our eyes could no longer see the horizon. Some have carried us upward with purpose, feathered wing in flight. All we have carried through the seasons of our lives that have brought us here to this place that we make sacred by our coming together and reciting these gathering words. Come, you are welcome here. Come, you are welcome here. It'll take me a moment <laughs> to figure out what I'm doing and to get my microphone back. Does that, is that working okay? All right. This reading is called Morning Watch and is by Barbara Peskin. Patiently. We waited in the dark. The planet turned, and we upon it, stupid with sleep, hoped something would happen. 
while we leaned toward the east, the weight of the night sank behind us. Toward the north, a comet passed so close we could see it through the sleep in our eyes. And then dawn flung itself up, swirling with clouds and color and bird song. Look, this is our world for another day. Reach out to it. It is your own life. Know, too, that this day is dear even to strangers you will never know. Stretch out your arms to embrace it. Do not go back to sleep. I invite you now to stand as you are willing and able and sing together our vision song. The words will be shown on the screen. story for all ages. I was going to direct it to the children and ask them to participate, but I don't see any children there today. But I will put on my costume. This goes back to the way Meredith was doing stories before we were all online. So here's my costume. And oops, there are things that the children might have done or said, but that's all right. Once, June was looking after her children. On a very rainy Saturday in the when there was not a lot to do outside. And the children were getting bored. And in fact, they started chattering so much that June just couldn't stand it anymore. So she decided she would find something else to do. And she looked around and found a magazine. And she flipped through the pages until she found something. It was a map, a partial map of the world. <clears throat> so she thought, this will keep the kids busy for a while. And she went snip, 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 and cut it up into a whole bunch of pieces, like a jigsaw puzzle and tossed them out to the children and said, there is a map for you to learn from. You can put the pieces together and see what the map looks like. So I 
June, <coughs> I, whomever, June, thought, okay, now I have time to go and do something else. I think I will make some tea to drink. So she went off into the kitchen and made some tea and brought back her cup and was ready to sit down and enjoy the quiet of the children working on the puzzle. Uh, much to her surprise, the children had put the whole thing together. Sorry. It was all back together. What happened? How did you manage to do all of that so fast? And one of the children said, on the back of the page was a picture of a man. So we just put the man back together. And then the world was back together. So, if you put the man right, then the world is okay. And now, it would be time to sing the children to their classes. I'm not sure whether there are any classes or any children that might go, but feel welcome. And we will sing uh, the, the, every, okay, go now in peace. There are the words right there. Okay, thank you. And now it's time for those of us who are in the sanctuary to greet our nearby neighbors briefly. Um, and those online, I'm sorry, but uh, send. I think there's a way to chat, so you can send us a chat if you'd like to, if your TV is as smart, smarter than ours. Ours doesn't work that way. Okay, so let's greet our neighbors for a moment. Find your seat. Well, that's one way to get one's attention. <laughs> so please take your seats and we'll continue with the service. Thank you. Each month, we designate our Sunday plate collections to benefit a local social service agency or organization. For this month of August, the beneficiary is UU the Vote, a nonpartisan effort to encourage voter participation in upcoming elections. 
Giving to First Church is easy. You can text the word GIVE to 513-717-7373. Or if you have access to the Breeze member system, you may click Give Now, or you can give online at firstuu.com. You can also write a check. Ah, oh, finally, we have that up there. You can write a check to First Unitarian Church of Cincinnati and mail it to 536 Linton Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45219. If this is your first time with us, please let the virtual plate pass you by. Your presence is gift enough to our church. This service can be blamed on the pandemic. While I was staying home with my first smartphone, I found the camera encouraged me to spend time outdoors, where I was struck by the play of sunlight and shadows and discovered I was seeing the world in new ways. We all need the time and chance to put ourselves right. And in the process, allow ourselves to find ways to put the world right. If photos are not your thing, John's music on the Native American style flute may help you to live in the moment with us. time for, for slides.
This reading is from Zen Fables for Today by Richard McLean. We will start off with photos of shadows and rain. Okay, here we are back with the Zen fables. This particular story starts out, a Zen master and his student were returning late at night to a mountain monastery when a brutal winter storm caught them on the treacherous path. To stop meant dying of exposure. To go on meant the risk of falling to certain death from the slippery cliffs. The only method of navigating was offered by the flashes of lightning that would illuminate the trail ahead. Slowly amid the banshee winds and biting rain, the pair crept forward. When they feared they had lost their way, they would wait for the lightning and memorize the trail ahead. At last, they reached the monastery. While drying off and eating a late supper in the kitchen, the student confessed to the teacher that what he feared most was that he would die without attaining enlightenment. Enlightenment, confessed the teacher, is not the sun that shines all day, but the lightning that gives only quick glimpses, thus allowing us to navigate from one troubled place to another. Is that true for you? asked the student. It's true for most of us, whispered the master. The author goes on to say, enlightenment is not unique to Zen. It happens to all of us 
in little doses at different times in those stunning personal insights about our place in the universe. These mini enlightenments come like lightning, then fade and are augmented by other insights that help light our paths. There's another section of this same, oh, sorry, in the book with a different story. Angry at being old, a grandmother bathed her new granddaughter in the kitchen sink. She coveted the glowing skin envied all the wonderful years that stretched before this magical spark of herself. In watching the tiny hand, the grandmother noticed its miraculous construction. A beautiful miniature, perfect nails, even the little wrinkle, wrinkles on the tops of the fingers. She studied her own hand beside her grandmother's hand, a granddaughter's hand, and in a moment of clarity realized that both hands were the same. The only difference was time. Each was perfect in its time. Each served its function in its time. And the grandmother realized that her own hand was beautiful too, only different. The author continues, Buddhism teaches that life is change, which is certainly not astounding. But Buddhism reaches beyond this truism to anticipate change and most important, accept it in its full richness when it arrives.
Here we have a UU voice from Sonata for Voice and Silence by Mark Bellatini. Late fall, less light, a time of rest for eyes weary of bright lights competing for our attention. Less light, a time to focus carefully on things that the spotlight has missed. Less light, no need to squint, eyes wide and alive. Less light, no need to look frantically for what we might be missing. Eyes closed and breath steady. Less light. Ample time to see the slant sun of dawn, kindling dewy webs between bare, wet branches. Less light, ample time to see the setting sun turn rain clouds into formations of flamingos. Less light, a blessing to all who never quite find time to sit in the dark silence during the noisy summer.
less light, a reminder to all those who need help, remembering that few, li few paths in this life are clearly lit. Less light, a time to notice shapes and textures, as well as color. Less light, a gift of the tilting earth. Less light, a gift, a blessing, a reminder, and a time of opportunity. Blessed are you, light that wanes. Now, let us take a moment to acknowledge and focus on the joys and sorrows which have been with each of us this week. Today, rather than dropping stones in water, we will simply sit quietly with each other, knowing that we can find strength in the love and support of this community. The flowers today are from the Board of Trustees and Right Relations Task Force in appreciation of the congregation's excellent response to learning restorative circles, conflict resolution techniques. The Board and Right Relations are especially grateful to consultant Sarah Elizabeth, Sarah Elizabeth Anderson, for believing in our congregation and teaching us skills to be a more inclusive and kinder beloved community. Thank you, Sarah Elizabeth. Now, I am going to encourage you to take part in a very different activity, which I have been playfully calling Sensing the Sanctuary. This will involve about four minutes in which to focus on one or more places or things in this room, this sanctuary. You may move around the room, noticing shapes and textures of carvings, windows, piano, or remain where you are and see details of the carpet, the chairs, the hymnals, or whatever you find to absorb your attention. Jira will play meditative music, three or four verses of find a stillness, 
for those who prefer sound instead of sight and to help signal when it is time to return to your seat. To get started, we have three more slides. Now, feel free to explore the sanctuary. And now, please find a safe path to your seat without lightning, but still well lit. This final reading is from Moonlight in the Frost by Danny Swicegood in How We Are Called. I was in the woods before daylight on a morning of heavy frost and sub-freezing temperatures, looking down to pick my way through the woods I noticed faint lights among the leaves. Since the nearest artificial light was some distance away, I stopped and knelt to examine the strange luminescence. When I reached down to touch the light it disappeared. Withdrawing my hand made the light reappear. Slowly I realized that each individual crystal of frost on the leaves reflected a tiny, perfect, full moon. 
The narrow deer path I followed into the woods was illuminated faintly by moonlight reflected on frost crystals. A Milky Way galaxy in miniature stretched before me here in the woods on an icy November morning, pointing the way to just pointing the way. I followed that path into the woods that morning. May we all be fortunate enough to have a path shown us by the universe. And may we all have the courage to follow it. Enlightenment need not arrive all at once or even after a lifetime of meditation and study. It might come in small packages as moonlight reflected in the frost of a cold November morning. Now, may we be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we all be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we be peaceful and at ease. May we be whole. Now, please join in singing hymn number 298 in your gray hymnal. Hymn number 298.
With awakened senses, we extinguish the chalice as we read together the words that will appear on the screen. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the power of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. <laughs> 